you are watching Junior Certificate Mathematics lesson. And today we are looking at revision mathematics paper two, which is a structured paper. And you are allowed to use a calculator in this paper. Therefore, you should have with you a set of mathematical instrument and a calculator because those are the resources you will need to answer this paper. And then let us look at the revision questions. Question number one. Calculate the area shaded green in the diagram below. So you are given the diagram here, and then you are expected to find the area shaded green as per this diagram. And then how are you going to find the area shaded green? What we can do is to take a triangle measuring, it's not a triangle but a rectangle, You can calculate the area of the rectangle measuring it's 8 by 13. That is 8 times 13. Find this area. And then after that, find the area of the rectangle inside. That is the red rectangle measuring 9 by 4. And then you can subtract the area of the rectangle measuring 9 by 4 from the area of the rectangle measuring 8 by 13. So the result will give you the area of the shaded part. In this case, that is the area shaded green. So let us find the area shaded green using those tips. And then how do you find the area of a rectangle? The area of a rectangle is length times the width. So if you have to find the area of this rectangle, it will be 13 times 8. So what is 13 times 8? Just take your calculator and then find out what 13 times 8 is because you are allowed to use a calculator in this pa paper. So it's 13 times 13 times 8. And then this is 104. So the area for this rectangle is 104. And then what about the area of the rectangle inside? That is the rectangle measuring 4, cent four centimeters by 9 centimeters. So we will have this. This rectangle is measuring 4 centimeters by 9. And then what will be the area of this rectangle? It will be 9 times 4 because the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. So this will be 9 times 4. And then what is 9 times 4? It's 36. So the area of this rectangle is 36. So what about the area of the shaded part? To find the area of the shaded part, it is the area of the rectangle outside minus the inside rectangle. So in this case, it will be 104 minus 36. So this is the area of the shaded part. We simply need to subtract the area of the inside rectangle from the area of the outside rectangle. That will give us the remaining part. In this case, is the green part. And that's what you are as to calculate. So what is 104 minus 36? You can just take your calculator, subtract 104 minus 36. We have 68. So the area of the shaded part is, rather the area of the part shaded green is 68. So this will be 68 centimeters squared. And this is what you were asked to calculate. In a question like this, all that you need to do is to calculate the area for the outer rectangle. Then after that, calculate the area for the inside rectangle. And then subtract the area of the inner rectangle from the area of the outer rectangle. That will give you the area of the shaded part here. In this case, it was shaded green. So that's what you were expected to find. Question number two. It says, Tuelo bought a jacket for 600 pula and sold it for 450. Calculate his percentage loss. So already you are told that this is going to be a percentage loss. So before you can find the percentage loss, you need to find by how much the loss has been. So all you can do is to subtract 450 from 600. And then what is 600 minus 450? It's 150. So this is simply saying there is a loss of 150 from the original price. So this will be 150 divided by the original price. And then what is the original price? The original price is 600. So it's 150 divided by 600. 
multiply this by 100%. Because the question says you are to calculate the percentage loss. So when you calculate percentage, we multiply by 100. So in this case, it will be 150 over 600 times 100. And then the zero here will cancel the zero over here. Then 15 into 15 once. 15 into 60 is 4. And then 4 into 4 once. 4 into 100 is 25. So this is simply saying the percentage loss is 25%. This is the percentage loss. It is 25% to 5%. This is what you are asked to calculate. All that you need to do is to find by how much the loss has occurred. In this case, it occurred by 150, and then it's 150 divided by the original price. The original price in this case is 600. So it's 150 divided by 600, and then multiply by 100%, because the question says you are to calculate the percentage loss. And this gave us 25% percent. This is how you find it. And then what about the next question? Question number three. Simplify the ratio 2 kg to 500 grams. So how do you simplify this? Is the 2 kg to 500 grams. When we check this, the units are not the same. We have the kg and the grams. So we cannot simplify this ratio with different units. We need to convert or rather make sure that the units are the same. And then how can we convert from the grams to the kg or the kgs to the grams? It is simpler to convert the kgs into the grams. And then when we convert the kgs to the grams, we multiply by a thousand because kilo means a thousand. So this simply means it's two times one thousand to five hundred grams. So we will have two times 1,000 grams is to 500 grams. All I've done over here is to convert the 2 kg to the grams. And to convert this 2 kg to the grams, we have to multiply by 1,000. So this will be 2 times 1,000 grams is to 500 grams. Meaning 2,000 grams will be to 500 grams. This is 500 grams. And then we have the grams and the grams, meaning we have 2,000 is to 500. And then we can now cancel with the common factor. One, two here, and then this zero as well as this. We now have 20 is to five. And then we look for a factor which can go into 50 and five. And this factor is 5. 5 into 5, once. 5 into 20 is 4. So the ratio is 4 is to 1. And we can see that they simplified. When given a ratio of different units, make sure that before you can simplify it, the units are the same. Then from there, that's when you can simplify the ratio. In this case, we are given the kgs and the grams. So we have to convert the kgs to the grams so that the units are the same. Then from there, we simplify. Uh, ending up getting the answer as a 4 is to 1. This is the simplified version of the question given. We are revising mathematics paper 2, which is a structured paper, where you are allowed to use a calculator and then a set of mathematical instruments. And in this paper, you are also required to show your working. You can't just write the answer. It is very important that you show your working because the method is very important here. You are going to be marked according to what you have worked out. So the method is important. Let's go to the next revision question. Question number four. A solid metal is in the form of a cylinder of diameter seven centimeters and height 12 centimeters as shown. So this is the diagram here. And you are told that this is a solid cylinder, seven, diameter seven centimeters, and then the height is 12 centimeters. The question now says, you are to calculate the radius of the cylinder. So how do you find the radius of the cylinder? You just need to start by locating the cross-section of the cylinder. So the cross-section is in the form of a circle. The top part is in the form of a circle. So this simply means you are to find 
the radius of a circle, the circle here. And we can see that its diameter is 7 centimeters. So how do you find the radius when given the diameter? The diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. This is how we find the diameter. The diameter is given as 2 times the radius. So we are given the diameter as 7. So 7 will be equal to 2 times r. And then we can divide both sides by 2, divide here by 2, meaning the radius will be equal to 3.5. So this is the radius of this diameter, rather the radius of this cylinder measuring 7 centimeters in diameter. And then we are at question number B, which says find the area of the cross section using pi s 3.14. So you are expected to find the area of the cross section. The cross section is in the form of a circle. And then how do you find the area of a circle? The area of a circle is given as pi r squared, where r is the radius. And in this question, the radius is 3.5. So it means to find the area, it will be 3.14 times r squared. And remember our r is 3.5. So the area will be 3.14 times 3.5 squared because we calculated the radius and we found out that the radius is 3.5. So the area of a circle is given as pi r squared. It's just pi r squared. This is how you find the area of a circle. So this is simply meaning it will be 3.14 times 3.5 squared. So let's calculate this. 3.14. 3.5 times 3.5. Then the answer is this. Multiply 3.14. And then the answer is 38.465. So we'll write this as 38.465. Five. This is the area of the cross section. And remember, the units were given in centimeters. So this will be 38.465 centimeters squared. So this is the area of the cross section. And then, question number C. Question C says you are to calculate the volume of the cylinder. Not the cross section, but the volume of the cylinder. So how do you find the volume of the cylinder? The volume of any prism is given as the area of the cross-section times the height. So what is our cross-sectional area? The cross-sectional area from part B is 38.465. So the area of this cylinder will be 38.465 times the height. And then what is the height of the cylinder that we are dealing with? We have to go back to that page where we got our cylinder and then check what the height is. The height is 12 centimeters. So this simply means the volume will be 3.465 times 12 centimeters. And then this will be what is 38.465 times 12 centimeters? We just have to multiply this by 12. And then this will give us 461.58. This is equals to 461.58. So we'll write our answer as 461.58. 5, 8. This is what we were expected to, or rather we are asked to calculate. The volume is 461.58 centimeters cubic because it's the volume. So when we want to find the volume of a prism, you simply need to find the area of the cross section. After finding the area of the cross section, you multiply the cross sectional area by the height or the length. In this case, it's the height. So we multiplied 38.465 times 
12 centimeters because the 12 centimeter is the height of the cylinder we are dealing with and the answer is 461.58 centimeters cubic. This is how you answer questions of this kind. We are at question number five which is an expression. And this expression, it says you are to simplify. So you are given an expression here, and then you are expected to simplify this expression. The expression is 2ax minus 5, 5bd minus 4ax plus 3bd. And then it's a question of how do you simplify an expression of this kind? When simplifying expressions, you just have to collect the like terms. So here, we are going to identify the like terms, collect them, then simplify. So which terms in these expressions are like? We will look at the expression as it is. 2ax, it's a like term to minus 4ax. So we will have 2ax minus 4ax. There is an ax and an ax here. So 2ax and minus 4ax are like terms. And then we have minus 5bd. bd and plus 3bd. These are also like terms. So we'll also have plus 3bd. And then what is 2ax minus 4ax? These are like terms. So all that we can do is to look at this. The signs are different. The sign for the 2 is positive and then the sign for 4 is negative. And then how do you simplify this? So we have 2ax minus 4ax minus 5bd plus 3bd. So what you can do is to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. In this case, 2 is smaller than 4. So we'll subtract 2 from 4, giving us, this will give us 2ax. And then what is the sign for the bigger number? In this case, the sign for the bigger number is negative. So this will be minus 2ax. Then minus 5bd plus 3bd. We subtract the smaller number from the bigger number, so this will be 5 minus 3, which is 2, and then put the sign for the bigger number. The bigger number is 5, and then what is the sign at 5 is negative. So this simply means it will be minus 2b, and then d. So this will be minus 2ax minus 2bd. So this is how we simplify it. All that you need to do is to collect the like terms. Then after collecting the like terms, you simplify, as the question said. It says simplify, and how do you simplify? You start by collecting the like terms. And then the next revision question. We are at question number six. Question number six says, the distribution below shows the edges of students in form two class. So we are given the distribution here. The distribution 17, 15, 16, 15, 17, 18, 15, 16, 16, and the list goes on. And then it says you are to complete the table for the frequency distribution below. So how are you going to complete the, fre uh, the frequency table here? Edge 15. All that you need to do is to find how many times 15 occur in this distribution. So that's what you're expected to do. You are just up to find out how many times 15 occurs in this distribution. So let's find out. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's check. Is there any, any other 15 that we didn't cancel? There's none. So 15 is occurring 5 times. This simply means the frequency of 15 is 5. So under frequency for 15, we'll write 5. So let's check, it's 5. And then what about 16? We need to find out the frequency of 16. Frequency of 16. We'll cancel 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 16 is appearing 8 times, meaning the frequency of 16 is 8. So for 16, we'll write 8 as the frequency. And then what about 17? Seventeen? 
17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 17 is appearing 5 times, meaning the frequency of 17 is 5. And then, what about 18? Let's check the frequency of 18. Frequency of 18. So 1, 2. So 18 is appearing only 2 times. So we'll write the frequency of 18 as 2. So the frequency of 18 here is 2. So this is the frequency of 18. Now, when we add the frequencies, that is the frequency for 15, frequency for 16, frequency for 17, and frequency for 18. All this should give you the total of 20. You are given this total as 20. So this was relatively simple because you are given the total. So let's check. Uh, our frequency is correct. When we add these frequencies, they should give us 20. 5 plus 5, this is 10. Plus 8 is 18. Plus 2 is 20. So we have managed to fill the frequency table as expected. And then what about the next question? That is question B. Question B says to calculate the median age. So we have to find the median age. And then how do you find the median age? It is the position of the median. So position of median is given as the sum of the frequency plus 1 divided by 2. And then what is the sum of the frequency? The sum of the frequency from that table, we have found out that the sum is 20. So this will be 20 plus 1 and then divide this by 2 and this will be 21 divided by 2 and 21 divided by 2 is 10.5 meaning we are to locate the numbers at positions 10 and 11 so we are to find out the terms at position number 10 and 11 so let's go back to the frequency table and then locate the terms at position number 10 and 11. So what is at position number 10 and 11? The first five terms, 15, rather it's 5. 15 age, we got uh, 5. That is 15, so we're carrying 5 times. Then after that, term num uh, the, the term at position number 6 is 16, 7, 16, but then when we can check, this is 8 plus 5. 8 plus 5 is giving us uh, 13, meaning both positions number 10 and position number 11 are within this. So position number 10 and 11 are within the frequency 8 over here, meaning the median age is 16 and 16. So how will we find the median then? So the median will be 16 plus 16 because at position number 10 is 16, position number 11 is also 16. So it's 16 plus 16 divided by 2. This will be 32 divided by 2. And then what is 32 divided by 2? This is just 16. So the median age is 16. This is how you work out these questions. I've covered what I wanted to cover in today's lesson, and I want to advise you to keep revising for your examinations. Remember, you have come the long way. You have been attending classes, preparing for these examinations. So it's very important that at this stage, you will now become very critical in your revision because you are just about to start your examinations. These are all the revision questions I wanted to cover today, and I want to believe it will help you in your learning of Junior Certificate Mathematics lesson. From me and the rest of the Junior Certificate Mathematics crew, goodbye.